Hi guys, how you doing? It's Lola here again. If you're new to my channel, I'm a master of permanent makeup, so I specialize in all things beauty. If you guys don't know, this is part three of a series of videos that I've been working on with my friend, the lovely Brittany. In our previous videos, we did her microblading, her ombre brows, as well as her permanent eyeliner. And so today's video is going to be her lip blush. So a few pointers before I start. When you're doing a semi-permanent lip procedure, make sure that you are experienced enough working with the machine because the skin around the lips is very, very thin. It's one of the thinnest parts of the human body. So if you don't have any previous experience or if you don't have any certifications, please do not just do this procedure based on my YouTube video today. I would highly recommend that you get trained somewhere professionally and build your experience and then start taking on clients as opposed to just watching videos and just going from there. It is a very difficult part of the body to master because the skin doesn't react the same way that eyebrow skin reacts. You can be frustrated and you can end up putting too much pressure or causing skin trauma, just putting the pigment too deep and making it cool down too much. There's so many factors that I would recommend that you first get trained and then go ahead and follow this video as your tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the lip blush procedure using my machine. It's the same machine that I've been using for all the other permanent makeup procedures except for the micro bleeding, which is obviously done by a manual hand tool. Um, so if you haven't seen those videos, check them out. The reason why I like to work with this machine the most and the reason why I branded it is the fact that you can work with almost all areas of the skin and any type of permanent makeup procedure. It doesn't really hold you only to doing just the brows, so I prefer it for everything that I do. How I prepare my machine for the procedure is I completely completely wrap it so you'll need two things to actually cover the machine before you start any procedure to prevent any um, cross contamination or just to be sterile and safe. So the first thing you're going to use for your machine is a cord sleeve like this and they come in a pretty long length just in case that you're using it for a wired machine. So how you'll do this is fold this long cord in half like that and then you're going to go ahead and fold that again one more time in half and this gives you just enough so that when you put it into your machine you can just fold it over and you don't have to be risking bodily fluids touching the machine itself. Okay, so now that I have my machine cord sleeve, I'm just going to slide it in here. I'm going to go ahead and tape it all around. These machines and these cord sleeves and all the other accessories are also available on my website for you guys to grab. Now that I've wrapped my machine in the cord sleeve, I'm going to use my second part, but before I do that, I'm going to first go ahead and open the needle. For this procedure, I'll be using a 1P needle, which means it's only one needle in the cartridge. All right, let's go ahead and put that guy in, just like that, and let's test to see if it's on. Perfect. I'm going to adjust the needle length to about two. Two millimeters is a good length to work with. Like that. Next, I'm going to wrap the machine with a self-adhesive tape. So let's say this long. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap this machine for the top half. And it's a really cool tape to use because it just sticks to itself. So you pull downwards towards yourself. Like that. we've completely wrapped our machine and it's safe for us to use and it's not going to come into contact with any bodily fluids which will prevent cross-contamination. So the first thing you want to do is find the center of your client's face and to do that I'm going to actually go behind my client. To find the center of your client's face I like to work within the eyes so I'll pretty much measure from beginning of one eye to another. I'm going to measure the distance between the two eyes and and that's about 16, so 32 divided by 2 would be 16, so I'm going to have one side down and I'll bring it down to 16. And with that imprint, I'm just going to mark that. And now let's double check to see that they line up. Good. Good. Okay, so that's the center. And now from there you can kind of just follow down, which is good because that comes to the bottom of her cupid bow. Now, you have your client's center of face, and now I'm going to go ahead and mark that according to where her cupid's bow should be, at the very center point of the cupid bow. And when you're placing the cupid's bow, always go by your client's natural lips. Don't try to make it a new shape completely. You can kind of enhance their shape. So I'm going to assume that one of them is right here, so I'll find 
let's say like her cupid's bow right there. I'll measure from here to the cupid's bow, then I'll go here to make sure they're even on both sides. And as you guys can see, I use a ballpoint pen in the color red, just because I find it's the most easiest and most versatile to use when you're doing a procedure and it doesn't wipe off as easily on human skin. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start shaping. When you're doing a shape for your client, again, keep it as natural as possible. Try not to go too much outside the lines. It will not look good, even if your client's requesting a crazy, big shape, it's probably not a good idea. Don't worry about the mess of the lines right now, I'm gonna clean that up with some concealer. So I kind of have like a rough shape at the top and now I'm gonna go ahead and line the bottom. Okay, so I've pretty much outlined the natural shape of my client, Brittany. I've only gone outside the lines just a tiny bit, maybe half a millimeter would be enough for you guys. To put into perspective, if you go way too much outside the lines of her natural lips and you try to put it on actual, um, a different type of skin, it will be obvious because the color is not going to heal the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and now clean the shape up with some concealer. For the concealer, you guys can use any brand generically really, but I like to get this one e.l.f. It's a pretty, inexpensive concealer. So I'm gonna go ahead and start dipping and I'm just gonna outline the corners of the lips. This helps to clean up the entire shape even if you've made a couple of wider or more squiggly lines. You can kind of snatch everything together using a nice handy dandy concealer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and outline the top. I'll start from the cupid's bow down. And let's outline the other side. If you conceal a little bit too much into your line, you can go back in with your ballpoint pen and correct it. So don't worry if you make that mistake. As you can see, I'm working very slowly. I personally don't think it's a good idea to do a very sharp cupid's bow because it doesn't suit everyone. So I like to stick with a more rounded, more softer cupid's bow. So this looks like it's pretty much ready to me. Okay, so just before I start doing my outline of my shape for my lips, I'm going to, again, make sure that they're even. So always measure twice before you begin cutting. Just based on the center of the face that we found through the eyes, I'm gonna kind of make sure that it's even on both sides so that one side is not longer than the other. And let's first line up one middle to the end. And that looks just about right to me. Now that's one half and then let's line up the other half. So now we can start. So for today's color, I'm going to start with a nice pink base and I'm gonna add another modifier of a deeper red for the lip pigment because I want to warm up the color. A base of a pink and a modifier of a red is gonna give you a very nice medium tone, which will heal to be very soft. The cooler the skin's undertone, the more warmth you have to add, AKA an orange or a red. So just like that, I've mixed it all together. As you can see, it's a nice, rich pink. It's not too red and it's not too pink. It's a good medium. So what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna outline the shape so that we don't wipe it off. A reminder, when you're working with clients' lips, the skin is very, very sensitive and it starts to swell up right away. I recommend starting with the top lip and then moving on to the bottom lip. Keep in mind that your client's mouth must be shut at all times, so you really need to have a good 
good stretch in a way where you're holding down the client's mouth from even moving. It can be a more painful procedure the first few minutes without the numbing, so please do make sure that you tell your client not to move as best as they can um, and to really stretch and push down the skin. Okay, so I'm gonna start doing her outline and I'm gonna start with the top lip and always remember to pull your outline towards yourself. So whatever angle you're sitting at, pull towards yourself. All right, let's begin. Your outline should be very, very soft and slow. Don't put too much pressure. The skin over here is very thin as is. It does not need too much pressure. I'm going to test to see if my line took. Cool, awesome. So I can see that it took over there. So I'm going to leave that and I'm going to start the bottom line. This is a good way to ensure that your pressure is enough and that it's actually taking in the skin. Okay, so now I'm going to start the bottom line. Remember that you're only lining wherever your concealer meets the red pen. Do not rush your outline. Your outline is the most important thing to ensuring that you're gonna have the proper shape in place and that it won't get wiped off. Okay, and now let's test the bottom to see if it took. Success. Working on practice skin, the pigment can kind of get everywhere and get stuck to it, so I like to use a little bit of the Cetaphil. I'll have a link to this in my Amazon affiliates down below, so you can go find it there. And what I do is I pretty much take this and smear it really well. Then you give it a nice wipe, and it takes off most of the pigment that is stuck to the skin. At this point, your client's outline is done and what I would have done if my client was actually um, able to feel any pain would be to lightly graze over the skin with my needle all throughout the lips just to open up the skin so that I can apply my anesthetic. But because my friend over here, Brittany, doesn't actually feel any pain, I'm just gonna go ahead and start filling it in. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna start filling it in and how I like to fill it in is I do section by section all the way and I'll do multiple passes until I'm satisfied. So I'll start from the very corner right here. Start from the top line, go all the way down to the bottom line. And like I said, if your client is real, then please stretch the skin better than I am right now. Once I go all the way back up to the top line, I'm gonna kick it out to the next section, like that. And then from there, I'll go down to the bottom line. And you should be able to see pixels as you do this. Make sure you remember to keep your pressure very light. So as you can see, I'm going back up to the top line now. And from the top, we're going to kick it out again. Go all the way to the bottom. And I'll go back up the top and 
come back up at the top and I'm going to work slower around these edges because I don't want to go outside the lines. And I'll kick it out to the next section like that. And and again go back all the way down. Now let's go back up. Go back up here. And now we're gonna kick it to the next section. But again, don't go outside your cupid's bow lines. Try not to go outside your cupid's bow. Hug around that curve and We'll start our make we'll start making our way down. Back up again. Down to the bottom. All the way back up to the top. And take it out to your new section. back up again and we're nearing the end so you're just gonna kick it up to your next small section work your way down I'm gonna really smear this guy in So that is our first pass. Now, as you can see, I'm going to do obviously another pass and keep doing that until I get an even color. Okay, a few pointers I want to point out. Practice skin absorbs pigment a lot faster than human skin does, so don't be surprised if around your second and third pass, the skin of a human actually needs more work because fake skin just absorbs pigment like it's nothing. So again, I'm just trying to emphasize that you may need to do more passes on a human skin. Just because the second or third pass is not enough, don't start to put more pressure. Pressure is not the key to getting more pigment to absorb. It's just doing more passes on the same spot over and over again. Again.
So that's just after our second pass. So now I'm gonna continue on with our third and do as many as we need to get to the same color at the top. Now I'm going to do my last one, really focusing on areas that I think need some work. And let's see how this has turned out. So that is the end on the bottom lip. Again, to review, I just created an outline throughout my shape and my shape was based on my client's natural lips and you don't wanna to go too much outside of their natural lips if you want to make it a little bit bigger, maybe half a millimeter to one millimeter max to fix asymmetries as well. Aside from that, once I had my outline, I just started filling it in. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed transforming Brittany with me as much as I did. As you remember, part one was her eyebrows, I did microblading and ombre. Part two was her eyeliner and today we did her lip blush. I hope that this video was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and comment them down below. I try to be of help as much as I can. Please subscribe to my channel to see more videos that I'll be posting very soon. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Love you.